plant, really? No, none of us can make a plant, but how do plants grow? What do you have to do? To, what do you have to do? You have to get a seed, like these, all right? You plant a seed, and then when you plant that seed, can you make a plant? Who makes the plant grow? God makes the plant grow. So we can't make plants, we can't build trees, all right, but we can plant seeds. That's pretty easy, right? And then once we plant seeds, then God makes it grow. So we have these piles of dirt here, these planters of dirt here. And so if I take this seed and I plant it right in that dirt, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's God going to do there? He's going to make it into a plant, and this a pea plant. So, how many of you can make a believer in Jesus? I can't do that. Can't do that. So, how a believer in Jesus? How does someone become a Christian, a believer in Jesus? Okay. They're going to hear that Jesus loves them. So, we can't make a believer in Jesus, but what can we do? We can plant a seed. Not a seed like this. We're going to call it a gospel seed. And what that means is, you can tell someone, hey, Jesus loves you. And when you tell someone about Jesus, when you tell someone that Jesus loves them, you just planted a seed, and who... Who's going to make, who's going to grow faith in their heart? Who's going to turn them into a Christian? God is. So we can't make someone be a, become a believer in Jesus. We want them to be a believer in Jesus so they can, so we can all go to heaven. But what we can do is we can plant seeds by telling them that Jesus loves them. When you tell someone that, you just planted a seed that God can now grow. So I want you to remember this. So I'm going to give you each a seed that you can just, just plant, don't get your hands all dirty, but just kind of, you can just drop it into these planters. And then we're going to see what happens in a couple weeks when you come back. And we're going to see what happens to these seeds. And that's going to be our little reminder to be also planting the more important kind of seeds, telling people Jesus loves them. All right, so let's pray. And then I'm going to give, you can come up here. I'm going to give each of you a seed. You can plant it. And then we'll head back to our seats. Sound good? Let's pray. Dear Lord, first of all, thank you for planting that seed in our heart. Thank you for maybe having mom or dad or one of our friends tell us about Jesus so that we could know how much you love us and so that we could have that faith grow in our heart. So, Lord, help us now share that with others. Help us plant that kind of seed in the hearts of others so that they may know about you too. It's not only what our church is all about. That's what our life is all about. Help us do that, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys can come up and get your seeds. Just, just take one out of my hand. There you go. There you go. I can't wait to eat. Hmm. So I got here about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and when I got here, when I accepted the call to be a pastor and plant a church here together with the people who are here, where we're sitting right now is just a field of dirt. And when we finally got that permit to begin building in the beginning of August, uh, we quickly saw the foundation being built up, and then before you knew it, walls coming up, walls that withstood that hurricane about a year ago. And, and it just kept going up. And so um, 
I hung out in the little trailer back that way about 50 yards. That's where I did my studying and my preparing for church and watching what was happening here. And maybe every couple of days, at least once a week, um, I, I got into a little habit. And what I would do is I would come and I would just walk around this place. I would, I would go around the perimeter of the building um, praying. It was my little prayer walks. And as I would walk around this place praying, I would pray that, that God would that God's presence would fill this place that was being built here. I prayed that, that God's word would, would be proclaimed from here in a powerful way. I, I, prayed that, I prayed that this would be a place where God's name would be glorified, where, where people would come to know God, where people would come to know Jesus, where there'd be no doubts about what we were doing here and that this place would just be filled with his presence. So as we thought about how to dedicate this building in the many various ways, I thought, what, what better way uh, to dedicate this building than by filling it with the Word of God? And not just, not just a, a sermon or just me, but like every one of us filling it with God's Word. And so we want to invite you to become part of this dedication with us and help us fill this building with the Word of God. And so a lot of you already have written your passage on your, on your gospel seed. And so we're going to invite you just to get coming up here right away. Um, we want to just go continuously so everyone gets a chance. And we're going to there, we got Dan over here, Patrick ushering, and we're going to, we're all going to go to the outside and make a line up around outside of the microphone. Step up to the microphone, you're just going to read your passage, and then you're going to walk down the steps and plant it in that planter. Just leave it right there. So we're going to go back and forth this side, so then this person will read, plant their seed. So we should just have some continuous flow, just letting the Word of God um, fill this building and hopefully um, be a very special time that none of us will ever forget. So I think I'm going to start it off. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. Do everything in love. 1 Corinthians 16.14. Isaiah 12.2. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on earth. Matthew chapter 6. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will also be. First Peter. Sorry. <laughs> Three, eight. Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another. Be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Ezra 311, with praise and thanksgiving they sang to the Lord. He is good, his love, and his love towards Israel endures forever. And all the people gave great shout of praise to the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. This is on behalf of Valerie Harvey, who couldn't be with us today. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father is God, and I will exalt him. Ephesians 3, 20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably, immeasurably
immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 71. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Malachi 3.10 Trust in me, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Psalm 25, verse 1 and 2. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, in you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. 1 Peter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he restores my soul. I couldn't find the passage I was looking for, but I think it was Samuel. The devil went to God and said that the only reason Samuel had faith in God was for all the things he had. So God let the devil do anything but take his life. All of his livestock and raids. He killed. The, he let the devil kill his family out of a gathering. And each time he'd have a shepherd, one left that would come one after another to tell him these things. But in the end, God gave him twice as much as what he had and showed him his love. Second Chronicles 2015. Thus said the Lord unto me, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. John 316. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believeth in him shall not die, but have eternal life. Matthew 12. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and smoking flax he will not quench. Psalm 56, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Isaiah 43, verse 1. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 15. Now faith, hope, and love abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Psalm 119, verse 1. Ephesians 
Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Something we've heard several times. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no man may boast. Job 19, 25 to 27. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. How my heart yearns within me. Mine is also John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3:16. Colossians 1, verses 10 through 12, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Philippians 1, 3 to 6, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.10 I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, and that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Romans 8, 38, In all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Thank you so much, all of you, for participating and blessing this building with God's word. Now we continue by singing the hymn of the day, Facing a Task Unfinished.
Welcome to all of you. Welcome to our dedication, this very special day, and, and welcome back to the second part in our message series, What's Under the Hood, as we take a look at the, the core values of our church, the core values that, that power ministry here. Before we get into the, the, our core value for the day, I just want to read you the story, the parable that Jesus told, and then the explanation um, that he gave. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching, he said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like the seed sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once received it with joy. But since they have the root, it lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed among the, sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop 30, 60, or even a hundred times what was sown. Why are you here? Why are you, why are you here today? probably all kinds of different answers, right? Like um, maybe, you know, some of you have been part of it. You've been looking forward to this church getting going for a while. You've been waiting for this. Some of you uh, designed this building. Some of you helped build it. Some of you helped finance it. Some of you, um, some of you just got that nice classy invitation in the mail and just wanted to show up. Um, some of you, a lot of you are from our, our, our other school in Doral and you, you came up to be part of this because you've been part of this even before I got here. Um, why are you here? Ultimately, there's one answer to that. Someone planted a gospel seed. Someone planted a gospel seed. A gospel seed, at one point, changed your life. Whatever it is, the, the, the outside reasons that you hear, you have some interest in what Jesus is doing in our world, and 
at some point there was a gospel seed planted that changed your life. A gospel seed changed your life, the way it changed my life, the way it changed the life of a four-year-old boy named Carter. This was, a, this was the kid that lived on our street who, he was, he was the kid always knocking on the door, hey, can Jonah and Elijah come and play? And, you know, he was arranging all the activities on our street. And so on Sunday mornings, see, Carter came from a family that no one went to church. Uh, no one believed in God. And on on Sunday mornings, our boys would come walking by his house because we worshiped in a school just like a block away. So they were little kids, four or five-year-olds, and they, they would go walking to the school to get to church. Carter would come outside, hey, where are you guys going? We're going to church. One Sunday it was, hey, where are you guys going? We're going to church. Well, what do you do at church? We learned about Jesus. Why don't you come with us? And Carter said, let me go ask my mom. <laughs> and so one of those times, Carter did, and he went along with them, and he kept coming with them. And then later on, when they started coming a little bit earlier to help us set up, guess what little six, seven-year-old kid start, was walking to church on his own? And he kept doing that. Long story short, he ended up getting baptized, getting confirmed, and now a college young man uh, leading one of the ministries at that church. A gospel seed changed his life. Jesus changes lives. He, we, we live in this world that, that, that has been so broken. We, we live without joy. We live with guilt. We live knowing that there's this barrier, this wall between us and God. We need an answer for this. We need a way to him, a way to our God, our creator. And we have this God who loved us and changed our lives by all that Jesus did for us with his life, death, and resurrection. Jesus changed our lives. And that's his mission. Changing lives is his mission. And he invites us on that mission he tells us, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. We are here to change life with Jesus. But, you know, let's keep that in perspective, right? If a wealthy and powerful person gave you, um, you know, free tickets to hand out to people, say those tickets might have the power to change lives, so to speak, what we get to do is hand them out. Or think of the farmer sowing seed, right? He sows the seed. He isn't giving life. The seeds are giving life. He gets to plant them. He gets to plant them. And so we don't have the power to change lives by our own power. We change lives with Jesus, but it isn't us changing lives. It's the good news of Jesus that is changing lives. We can't change anyone's life by our own power. What we can do is tell someone about the power of the good news of Jesus. What we can do is plant gospel seeds. We are here to plant God. And so that's our first point today. It's why we're here. Why are we here? We're here to plant gospel seeds. Okay, it's, it's why we're here. First of all, it made a difference in our life. I mean, literally, it did. That's why we're here. But also, it will make a difference in the world around us. And so that's why our church is here. Okay, that's why this building is here, ultimately, because this is the place where the Word of God dwells and where the Word of God will go out from into His world, planting those seeds. That's how God's kingdom works. A few minutes later, after Jesus told that story, He said, He told another little story. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up. The seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. So we plant the gospel seeds. The Holy Spirit does the work. We get to plant those seeds. God is the one going to make them grow. God is the one doing the actual work. This is how God's kingdom works. Um, his, his followers, his missionaries, his disciples understood that. So the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth later on. He said, what, after all, is Apollos? And what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe, as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose— and each will be rewarded according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. We are God's building. Okay, God is, 
because you have you have the the plant and and planting and, and plant and seeds you know imagery in the Bible. You have the body of Christ imagery in the Bible. You also have the building. And so God has planted that in our hearts, and we have, as it says in Ephesians, we have risen up to become a building, a building that people come and see the presence of God in. And so let's, let's think of this building not only as this wonderful structure that gives us the opportunity to gather together, but let's think of us as the building, part of us, that, that this is what we get to do as that gospel message goes forward, as we get that out there. We... Th- we are the building, and this is the building where those seeds get sown. Let, let, let's think about that parable of the sower for a little bit. Who's the sower? The sower is anyone who scatters the seed. Okay, we are the seed planters. The seed is the word of God. The hearers are people who don't know about Jesus yet. And then you have the obstacles, don't you? The things that try to keep the seed from growing. There's various obstacles that get in the way that try to prevent, that, that get between the hearer and the message to try to rob the hearer of faith and the fruit that comes from the faith. So the goal is to plant the seed in the soil of a person's heart, but there are many things that try to prevent or that keep that from growing. What are some of those obstacles? There's basically three obstacles that Jesus lists in that story. One is, one is cold rejection. Okay, this is where, you know, the seed falls on the path. So this is where the gospel seed falls on just a hard heart. Satan comes, the enemy comes, snatches it away. This is the person that just refuses to listen. It's in one ear and out the other. They refuse to listen. This is where, this is the door slammed in your face. Just cold rejection. Doesn't even take root. The second, the second obstacle is where it doesn't get rooted. Okay, it's talking about a, a, a very thin layer of soil where there's just rock underneath. And so maybe at first, you know, the seed is planted and, and, and a person gets all excited about Jesus and all excited about church, all excited about the idea of what that means, but then they don't spend any more time in the Word. They, they don't nurture it. You know, if we don't water these seeds, what's going to happen, right? Nothing, okay? so they don't nurture it. They're not in the Word. Maybe church just becomes this, well, I show up once a year, or the, the Word of God is just something only done on Sundays, but they never actually grow in the Word. And so there, no roots grow. And so what happens is the first time they run into a challenge about their faith, they drop the faith like a bad habit because it's not worth it. There needs to be roots there. The third challenge, the third challenge is the distractions of the world that we live in which is not hard to figure out, right? Uh, All the worry and stress and all the things that cause worry and stress distracting us from the one thing we need. Um, Just think of all of the... um, all of the materialism in the world today and the greed that goes with it, all of the, the desires, the word there is lust, just the lust for just things of the world that consumes us. And so just like weeds do to your garden at home or to your grass at home, those things just choke that faith out before that faith has a chance to produce fruit. So there's all kinds, all kinds of things that are going to distract and prevent faith from growing and from producing fruit. We just have to plant seeds. Our job is planting seeds. So we want to plant without discrimination, all right? Throw the stuff everywhere. You don't know where it's going to grow. Throw it on the path, on the ground. We throw it, we're just going to throw it everywhere. We'll let the results be up to God. So plant without discrimination. We're not going to be the kinds of planters that, that only very neatly, you know, plant one seed here where we think it might grow. You might do that in your garden, but not with gospel seeds. We're not going to plant like that. We think, oh, one's not going to grow there. I'm not going to drop a seed there. We want to throw that stuff everywhere we can. We want to share the gospel with anyone we can. If you only plant one, you only get one. So our church, our church, we're here, we're going to plant all the gospel seeds we possibly can. That's what we're about. <laughs> That's what our academy does every day. We get to share those seeds of gospel with those children who come every day and just watch that grow in their hearts and lives. Um, the camps that we're going to run um, will give us opportunity to plant those seeds with the, with the children and the other people of our community. 
the, the events from Advent by candlelights to worship services to programs to whatever we run here that, that, we, that we bring in. We're going to be planting the seeds of the gospel. Um, the social media things we can do to get the message out there. We're going to be planting seeds of the gospel, inviting people in. All right? We're going to just get the gospel out there any which way we can get it out there. These are gospel seed planting ministries. Meaning, not everyone's going to join the church, but everyone's going to hear the gospel. Everyone's going to hear the gospel. Our job is planting those seeds. So, and sometimes, sometimes God brings life where you least expect it. In, in, in a very awesome way, um, just reminding you that every single soul is valuable. The last church I started, we, you know, we, we spent, I don't know, how, we, we spent so much time uh, we knocked on thousands of doors, you know, door-to-door evangelism kind of stuff. And um, basically what we found is one in a hundred people even wanted to talk to you. And then take those people, one out of a hundred of those people would even go any farther than, let's say, just talking to you. Maybe, maybe actually getting into a deeper conversation or coming and checking out your church. And so it seemed very fruitless at the time, but you know what? One of those people who was one out of a hundred, who was one out of a hundred, was a woman named Marcia, and she ended up coming to church, and her husband ended up, she was in faith already, her husband ended up coming to faith, and she became this sort of catalyst member, founding member of our church that brought people together. And so sometimes when you're planting those gospel seeds, what seems to be a waste of time, like nothing's going to happen, God blesses in the most incredible way with his power. You don't even know how it happens. You don't even know how that was possible. So, yes. The church is here to plant gospel seeds. But, you know, today's message doesn't just speak to us as a church. This, this really is more importantly speaks to each of us as individuals. We, each one of us, you and I, personally are here to plant gospel seeds. This is what, this is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. This is what followers of Jesus do. Now, don't let that, when I just told the story about knocking on doors, don't let that scare you. Don't let that frighten you, okay? Let it excite you. Let it let it give you something to look forward to. I think most people, when they hear about evangelism or witnessing your faith, they do. They think of going door to door, knocking on doors, trying to force awkward conversations with people they don't know. Um, Jesus never evangelized like that. Some of his disciples did. But if, that's not evangelism. Evangelism is so much more than evangelism is just life evangelism, um, planting seeds is just everyday life. My job is not a door-to-door -door salesman. I wouldn't be very good at that. My job is not trying to convince someone to buy something, to buy into something. Okay, my job is a gospel seed planter. I plant seeds, I let God do the rest. Your job is not a door-to-door -door salesman. It's not your job to convince anyone of anything. Your job is a gospel seed planter. So I want to encourage you to look at it that way, to, to visualize your role in God's kingdom like that. Just someone who plants gospel seeds. And you and I, uh, what we need to do is we need to, we need to see with planters' eyes. Walk through life with planters' eyes, always just looking for those opportunities to plant those seeds. But what does it mean? What does it mean that we love to plant gospel seeds? I mean, what, what exactly is planting a gospel seed? It, it's any way, any way, little or big, that, that we drop a truth about Jesus into someone's heart. It, it's any way, from, from a little way to a big way, that, that we just share some truth about Jesus with someone. So, like maybe, um, let's just start with some very easy ones. Inviting someone to church. Inviting someone to Bible study. Telling someone, I'm going to pray for you. Okay, these are just, these are uh, freshman level, JV level, entry level, easy ways to do it, okay? We all can do this. And maybe you haven't directly, you know, uh, read a passage to someone or told someone a truth about Jesus, but you know what you've done? You've told them that you believe in Jesus. 
and that you, you've let them know that it's something important, so important to you that you think it's important for them too. So these are great, this is a great way to start out planting seeds. Invite someone to church, Bible study. Um, how about uh, put your Divine Savior Church and wearing, uh, your, your Divine Savior Church shirt and wearing it? No, we're not going to count that. Sorry. Unless, unless it leads to a conversation. Now we're going to count that, right? So that's why, that's why, yes, wear those shirts, put those decals on your car. If that leads into a conversation, then it gives you the opportunity to plant a gospel seed. But just because you wore your shirt doesn't mean you can count that. It's got to lead to conversation. Here's a good one. This is a good one. This works for a lot of people. You share your brief story of how Jesus changed your life in 100 words or less. Don't, don't drone on for two hours. Just see if you can get it in 100 words or less. Your story of how Jesus changed your life. And you just kind of have that at the go, at the ready. When there's a moment, you share that with someone. That makes a difference. That means something to someone. Share that story. Here's another good one. Answer someone's faith question. People have questions. They're going to ask. And we love to run away. Uh, well, let, let me ask my pastor. And, and that's fine. You can do that. But sometimes dive in and go for it. Answer their faith question. I'm going to throw a couple more easy ones at you. Forward an email. That's not hard, right? Forward an email that has a good thought in it or a devotion. Um, you, can, you can put a gospel thought on your Facebook page or forward someone else's gospel Facebook uh, uh, page on your Facebook page. Okay, some more easy ones to do. Or how about I uh, give, so, give someone an invite card to church. We got a bunch of them on the back table. Go ahead. But here's one I love. And this is asking someone a question. Ask someone a question. Ask a question that gives someone something to think about. Some people are really good at doing this. Like, like this street preacher um, who just somehow can bring Jesus into everything. So a friend spent some, some time with him and, and was just amazing how he could always just bring Jesus into everything. So they went out to lunch together at Subway. And when it was time for them to order, he steps up there and he orders a six-inch tuna sub. And as the young woman behind the counter starts making his sub sandwich, he asks her very plainly, do you think that sandwich can feed 5,000 people? And she's like, uh, well, um, no, sir, but we do make the, the 40 sub platter uh, for, for catering, but that's as big as we make them here. And he's like, no, no, no. That sandwich. That sandwich right there. Do you think that sandwich can feed 5,000 people? So now she's like, well, no, sir, I don't think that sandwich can feed 5,000 people. So he says, well, then you don't know my God. So at that point, his friend is kind of just like backing away from the counter and just, hey, I just wanted my uh, meatball sub here. Some people, some people can't order a sandwich without seeing an opportunity to share the gospel. I don't know if that's any one of you in here. That's not me. That level yet, okay. But maybe we can learn from people like that. It's good to hang out with some people like that. Maybe we can learn from them because maybe, maybe we're at this end of the spectrum and they're at this end of the spectrum and maybe, maybe they can help us see a few more opportunities to ask a question that might give someone something to think about so we can learn from them. We, we need to learn from each other. Finally, you know, asking a question. Finally, um, let's just get to this one. Give an all-out witness. Just tell someone who Jesus is and what he's done for you. And it doesn't have to be that complicated, but just tell them who Jesus is and what he's done for you. Be ready to give a reason for the hope that we have because of Jesus. Peter wrote that to the church, churches in Galatia when he said, but in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. So planting gospel seeds is simply being ready to give a reason for the hope that you have in Christ. And share your stories. Share your stories, because I know you have been telling people about Jesus. 
I know you've been inviting people to church, so share your stories. Like um, one with my friend Gil. Year, years ago, years ago, um, I walked into a Domino's uh, pizza store wearing my soccer camp shirt. It said, Jesus loves you on the back. And I, I ran into this uh, balding British guy with two babies. And he looks at me, he's like, in a British accent, like, soccer and Jesus? I'm like, yeah, happen to think that Jesus loves you is pretty important for all of us. That's an important message for you and me, and we think it's important for kids, too, and we found that the soccer field is a great uh, place to share that with them. So he's like, hmm, interesting. So four years later, those two babies were now kids, and Gil and his wife Catherine brought them to our soccer camp. And Catherine was out there all week um, as the coaches were planting those gospel seeds in those kids' heart. And on the final day of the camp, Catherine walks up to Monique, who was the lead coach in that group, right in front of all the parents, because all the parents were there. And she asked her, so what, is your chi- so what does your church teach about homosexuality? Talk about having to be ready to give an answer, right, for the hope you have and for the faith that you believe in. And having to plant a gospel seed and doing it with grace, which is what she did. Gil and Catherine, the whole family, are, are active in their faith and leaders in that church today. Share your stories. We need to hear them. Now, sadly, sadly, I could tell a whole lot more stories about the times that I did not plant a gospel seed where I could have. Are you? Can you probably join me in that, right? Listen, Jesus still loves you. He has forgiven you. So go plant those seeds. And maybe there's times you planted a gospel seed, but you didn't see anything grow, and maybe something in opposite got in the way and and, uh, didn't happen, and so maybe um, you're starting to beat yourself up about it because you didn't do something right, or, or you start losing your hope that it works. Listen, get rid of the guilt and get rid of the despair and you just plant those seeds. Plant them in joy. We have to keep straight God's business and our business. Okay, it's our business to plant gospel seeds. It's our business to to spread the word. It's God's business to use that word to accomplish his desires. So we get all excited about um, counting and celebrating worship attendance and and school enrollment. But even more important than that, let's count and celebrate how many gospel seeds we plant. How many conversations you have with with guests that that direct their hearts to Jesus. Or how many contacts with people um, who who have a question, who who, who reveal they have a question about about that they want to know more about God. Or, Or maybe how many people you invite how many neighbors or friends or family members that you invite to church how many times that you give a reason for the hope you have in jesus to someone who doesn't yet know him let's count and celebrate these things okay it's it's god's business to to move someone's heart to make that very scary decision to to come to a church service it's our business to plant gospel seeds God's business to, to, to work faith in someone's heart or, and strengthen the faith. It's our business to plant gospel seeds. So let's let him do his thing and let us be doing our thing. We are a church that loves to plant gospel seeds. Second point today, it's what we celebrate. Okay, it's why we're here and it's what we celebrate. So let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate that. How? Tell others. If you plant a seed, tell someone. Come tell me. I want to hear about it. Tell your friend. Tell anyone. Okay? It's not bragging. It's not bragging. It's going to encourage other people to do it. Friday afternoon, um, I was moving some chairs around right in that room. There's a guy working up on the duct work in there. We struck up a conversation. He was telling me how he's trying to teach his daughter how to live a good life. I'm like, oh, I know someone who can help you with that. And we got into a conversation, uh, which ended with him giving me his phone number because he wants to be in our first Bible class that we teach in that room over there. So I ran back into Dawn's office, and I'm like, I planted a gospel seed. Let's tell each other when we do it so we can celebrate that. 
Second thing, put it in the prayer book back there. So we can, we can pray thanks that you planted one, and we can pray God will bless it. And the third thing, the third thing, when you see others or hear others doing it, because they're not going to tell you about it, when you see them doing it, point it out and encourage them. That's what coaches do, right? When they see their player doing something right and well, they're, they encourage them. So let's coach it up among us. When you see each other doing it, let's celebrate this. Last night, uh, I got the privilege of um, hanging out with the, the architects, the team of architects that designed and built this building. We were talking about some of the favorite, you know, our favorite parts of the building and just the things that we appreciated so much. And uh, you know what my favorite part of this building is? And no, it's, it's not the cool blue lights in that, in that room or the, the colorful clouds hanging on the various ceilings of this room. I, I could list so many things, but, but like Mike and John, like do you know what my favorite part of this building is? I don't even think you could have planned for this. My favorite part of this building is our view. Maybe more specifically, my view. Everyone turn around. Just turn around real quickly. Those are the people out there. Those are the people living out there, driving by out there. Those are the people that we are here to reach. And so as we go from here out there to plant seeds, and as we bring people from out there in here to plant seeds, think of what? Think of the power of not just one, but many seeds. And not just to bring more people into our church, but to change their lives. And, and what are we, when you plant a seed, think about what's happening. When you plant a seed and it produces a crop 30, 60, 100 times more, what is the 30 and 60 and 100? What is it producing? More what? More seeds. More seeds. So when you plant a seed and, you, and it grows 30, 60, 100 times, those are 30, 60, 100 more seeds. Seeds produce more seeds. Seeds plant more seeds. And so when you share that message, when you plant that seed with someone, that person is now going and planting seeds with others. So the good news is now more. All because you planted a seed. All because someone planted a seed in you. Which is why we're here. So imagine, imagine who you're all going to see in heaven. There's going to be a fisherman named Peter there. A tax collector named Matthew. A murderer named Paul. There's going to be a lot of people, good and bad. People who someone planted gospel seed in, won't it be awesome? Won't it be awesome to see your friend there? See your neighbor there? To see your spouse there? To see the person that you took the time and had the courage to plant a gospel seed in. There's going to be a lot of rejoicing in heaven. We're going to celebrate the fruit of our planting there. We're going to celebrate planting those gospel seeds here. And today, today we're going to celebrate this beautiful place that God has given us to do it with. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the, 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 the gospel that you planted in the hearts of all the people here. Water it, grow it, make it grow strong, let it produce fruit for you, more seeds more gospel seeds in the lives of others so that they also come to know you and have a future with you to look forward to. Lord, bless this building as a place that plants seeds, that shares your love with the community around us so desperately needing it. In Jesus' name, amen. This time I just encourage and invite you to fill out those connect cards that are in your service folder. Um, those will help us serve your spiritual needs better. There's, there's some next steps you can take uh, on, the, on the back of that that just is a, kind of a response to the word. Also, any prayer requests you put in there, um, I will pray for throughout the week.
joy offering that is going to help the, the people of this church some ownership and, and uh, be generous toward helping fund the, the audiovisual um, equipment in this worship place. And so today is the final day that we get to uh, bring that offering forward in a way to, to, to celebrate this this building and also to thank God for what he's doing here. So so um, if you do wish to give to that offering, mark that offering something about songs of, of joy because today we bring that to God's altar as our way to dedicate this building. Please rise for the, for the church. Lord, we bring these offerings to you as our songs of joy, as our way to, to praise you, to proclaim your good works and deeds and grace in our life. Lord, this is our way to, to shout our praises, to sing our praises to you for your grace, your love, your generosity in the amazing opportunities you've given us here in this new ministry, in this new building, and the ways that we can, the tools that we can sing your praises and, and declare them. So accept this as our, our thank you to you, Lord. Accept this as our offering of thanks and, and our way to show trust in you that you'll take care of us, that you're generous with us when we're generous with you. And because you've been so generous, with us. We, we, we just have so much to be thankful for. So these are songs of joy. This is our way to thank you. Lord, thank you for this building. Thank you for all the things you made happen and all the prayers you answered to bring us to this day, to give a place where your people could gather to worship and be filled with the word, to give a place where children could come to school and learn about you and, and grow in their faith and, and grow as young people in this world. We ask your blessing on our ministry, on our church, on our academy, on all we do, that it may glorify you. So let our lives also reflect these offerings that as we head out there, that in our words, in our actions, we plant those seeds of your gospel in the hearts of people the same way that you planted it in our hearts. We ask you to be with those of us who are, are suffering, um, to be with Orva and Richard and, and Bob and, and Kathy with them, strengthen them, heal them. We thank you for bringing Orva and, and Richard through surgery successfully and that Orva could be here with us today, continue recovering her and, and giving her health back so that, that she, along with all of us, can be the kind of people who praise you and share your joy with everyone we meet. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the celebration. Help us rejoice because of your grace today. In Jesus' name. Amen. We join together praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus make us strong to do his will. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus fill our lives. Let's remain standing for our closing song, Build Your Kingdom.
And thank you to our musicians for glorifying God in our presence. Thank you for all who set up. And thank you for all of you um, joining us today. So again, welcome to Divine Savior Church. Uh, thank you to all, all of you for joining us. Um, wonderful having our guests here with us today. And hope that everyone can stay after. We have all kinds of treats, fellowships, refreshments, and goodies that you can hang out in the whole area back there um, and enjoy together. So welcome to our new building. Glad to have you here. Um, the fun continues today, so later this afternoon we are having the grand opening of Divine Savior Academy, the official grand opening for all of us for the community. Um, we hope to welcome many people from our community in for that as we cut the ribbon officially and officially open it and give proper thank yous and speeches and so forth. That's going to happen at 4 o'clock, um, and so we welcome you back for that. 
come back next week for our next installment of our core values, what's under the hood, um, as we talk about the next core value of our church. And finally, normally on a Sunday, we do have the DS Kids program. We just didn't today because we didn't want anyone to miss out on, on all of the things that we did here together as a family. So next Sunday, again, parents, uh, we will have that program um, during church. We want to introduce a few um, people. We want to introduce uh, the, the architect team here, um, as, as well as um, the, a representative from the Church Extension Fund that has helped fund this and, and back this. And so I'm going to invite um, Pastor Carlos Lyra from Doral, um, president of Divine Savior Ministries, to come forward. Joel has a lot bigger ears than I do. <laughs> we just need to get that on the record. God made you beautiful. <laughs> okay. Um, that sounds really loud. but Okay, so we have uh, just, I want to introduce, and I'm going to call them partners. There are multiple people in each group. Um, first of all, just thanks for the service, Joel. That was awesome. Um, a celebration. It was emotional. It was just really cool. And I think back to when, uh, Sean and I, there's a picture on that uh, timeline back there. When we were standing here, and this looked like the scene of a zombie apocalypse movie, uh, there was abandoned trailers and RVs, and, and we did this <laughs> because we were saying this is going to be awesome, and so to be here today and see it in the awesome state uh, is really cool. So we give all the glory to God for that, first and foremost. But we do have some key partners here on earth. And so I'm going to ask them, as I introduce you, I'm going to ask them to stand and, and kind of express why they're a key partner. So, and you need to stay standing, because then when we're done, we're going to give them applause. All right? So the first one is Scott Page. Scott Page is the president of the Church Extension Fund. And the executive director, I believe, is his official title. Um, the Church Extension Fund is a group, it's a bank, but they support many of our congregations across the wells. And their, their niche, if you will, is doing mission starts and, and helping congregations do more ministry. And so Scott is here today. They're here to see the final product. He's here to, to celebrate with us. But I can't tell you how big of a partner the CEF, Church Extension Fund, has been for us. They basically are doing a loan here and helping us do a ministry that's not one we could just put out in the street and have 100 people jump at it. They're doing it because they believe in ministry and they want to see this move forward. Um, in addition to the loan, they gave us over $600,000 in grants. Is that right? So that's a nice gift as well. Um, I don't know how many com conversations Scott, have, Scott and I have had to get to this point. Um, he has my number memorized which is, I don't know if that's a good thing, but he, he says he always knows that I'm calling, and yet he always takes the call. And so thank you, Scott, for all your work, and please give our thanks on behalf of this group here back to the board. Um, and they're welcome here certainly anytime. We consider this to be your house also for everything you've done for us. The architect team, Somerville, Team Somerville, Todd, and John and Mike, if you want to stand, please. So Somerville is our architectural firm. They're out of Green Bay, Wisconsin, of all places. And yet, we met them while we were looking to do uh, our high school down in Doral. And now we're, we're looking at a fourth project together. So they've become a real partner in all of this. Um, Mike's a member of our church body as well. And as Mike said last night, you guys do a lot of work but it's a little special when you get to see something like this, where God's word, where gospel seeds are being planted in this community. Uh, they do great work, first of all. Uh, but second of all, they've just been an awesome partner in this whole thing, too. And really good friends as well. So we're just super thankful for them. So Mike is the president at Somerville. John was lead architect on this project. And Todd, they said, just did all the work. So 
Uh, we thank them for their partnership in this. And then last partner, and, and this is a, a, a multi-group person. It would be the Pompano Lutheran group from back in the day. So if you're a member or were a member of the Pompano, group, Pompano Lutheran group and you're able, please stand also then. And this is a group that has gone through the wilderness, if you will. Uh, we were out in, uh, at Pompano Lutheran Church, and then they decided to merge with Divine Savior. They sold everything they had known for so many years. And then we went to the veranda room at La Quinta Inn. And then we were uh, at another hotel. Oops, oh. Other spot or stop along the way. Then there was that little brief period at the Hilton. And then we were at the movie theater just down the road at the Delray Marketplace. But these people not only were contributors in so far as giving their assets to make this happen, uh, but they were also contributors in just sticking with us through all of this and all of the steps along the way. And so on behalf of all of us, just welcome home. You're here and we're done. I promise you don't have to move again for a while. So let's thank all of these partners for everything they've done for us. And you can have a seat and I don't have anything else other than if you're able, come back at four o'clock as we dedicate this with the community. Minor detail. The Somerville group is not only behind this ministry with their thoughts, and, and I'm sure there's some prayers involved, and then obviously their good work, um, but they also wanted to give a gift back to this facility and back to our, our Songs of Joy um, offering. And so in my pocket this morning, I was given a check from Team Somerville in the amount of $25,000. So thank you, Team Somerville, for your gift uh, in helping us praise the Lord here in this building. So thanks, Team Somerville. So I'm going to turn around now and go put this in the offering plate before it gets lost. This is a way. Thanks again. I don't have anything else. I've been waiting to say this for a while. Let's go celebrate.